A'udhu billahi minash shaitan nirajim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Ar-Rahmanirrahim Maliki yawmadeen Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'in Edina sirata mustaqim Sirata ladhina an'amta alayhim Ghayr maktubi alayhim Waladolim Amin Peace and blessing be upon everyone who sees this. We are sending our love and our deep longing for illumination amongst all of humanity to you from Columbus, Ohio and this beautiful waterfall manifestation of Allah's infinite grace. I am Sheikha Maryam Kabir Fai Al-Fakira and I represent the Mustafawiyah Tariqa, which is a Sufi Tariqa of illumination, training, transformation, and prayer. Um, I have a little talk to make as an offering. And so I'll begin. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of God, the merciful, the compassionate. Allahu la ilaha illallah al hayu kayyum la tahuku sinatu wa la naum lahu ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard man dhaladhi yashra'u indahu illa bi'idni ya alamu ma bina aydihim wa ma khawfahum وَلَا يُهِتُونَ بِشَيْءٍ مِنْ إِلْمِهِ إِلَّا بِمَا شَاءَ وَسِيَ كُرْسِيُهُ سَمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَلَا يَأُودُهُ هِفْتُهُمَا وَهُوَ الْعَلِيُّ الْعَظِيمُ سَرَكَ اللَّهُ الْعَظِيمُ Allah, there is no God but He, the living, the self-subsisting, eternal. Neither slumber nor sleep can overtake Him. His are all things in the heavens and on earth. Who is there who can intercede in His presence except with His permission? He knows what is before them and what is behind them nor do they compass anything of his knowledge except as he wills. His throne encompasses the heavens and the earth and he does not tire of guarding and protecting them for he is the Most High, supreme in glory. He chose to honor this glory, this splendor in, in the presence of his beautiful creation here at this waterfall, signs of his majesty, signs of his power, signs of his love. And this, the purpose of this video is to share that, that sense of wonder, that sense of joy and gratitude for all this that he has given us. And to seek for understanding about how we can participate in this beautiful unfoldment in the most true, sincere, and effective way. So I begin with the, a, a surah from the Quran entitled the Surah of the Light. This is one ayah. Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. The parable of his light is as if there were a niche and within it a lamp, the lamp enclosed in a glass. The glass as it were a brilliant star lit from a blessed tree 
an olive, neither of the east nor of the west, whose oil is luminous, though fire touches it not. Light upon light, he leads to his light whom he will. Allah sets forth parables for men, and Allah knows all things. Surah Nur, ayah number 35. Beloved brothers and sisters on the journey to God, let us contemplate the meaning and significance of this profound, mysterious ayah from Surah Nur, chapter on the light. It is indeed one of the parables set forth by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of all who knows all things. It is a parable of light revealing the nature of his self-generating light and also the connection between the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the light of his messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Mercy for all the worlds. It is also, as many scholars suggest, a metaphor for the way in which the light of God and his guidance manifests in the heart of the believers. Although it is a light upon light, it is but one unlimited light, light within light, just as the niche is within the lamp that is within the glass, which is a shining star. It is a parable of light, unlike any light that we have ever seen, light that illuminates itself, and is the light itself that brings into existence and illuminates all things. We are told that it is a parable, and we know that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of all things, knows what he means by this sacred metaphor. But we believe that it is an invitation to illumination, to receive, be transformed by, and transmit divine light, the radiance and clarity of which is very much needed to illuminate and transform the darkness of illusion of the world, dunya, through which we are traveling en route, God willing, back to the source of light. We can witness a reflection of this light that generates all of creation in our life on this earth in the marvelous signs manifested in nature, the waterfalls, rivers, and oceans, descending rains, which make amazing vegetation of all kinds rise up in bloom. I am writing about this while flying above an array of wonderfully designed configurations of clouds in the early morning radiant sky. The outspread splendor of beautiful cloud forms, the intricately sculpted mountains and flowing rivers peeking through the cloud formations in the early morning light, and even the amazing plain which can fly through the skies that God enabled man to create are signs of the power and grace of God that we, as creations, are capable of perceiving. This is His light made manifest, inviting us to be witnesses, beholders of His endless grace. As the Quran tells us, and in the earth are signs for those whose faith is sure, and also in yourselves. Can you then not see? Surat al-Dariya 20 and 21. And he tells us further, behold in the creation of the heavens and the earth, in the alternation of the night and day, in the sailing of ships through the ocean for the benefit of mankind, in the rain which God sends down from the skies, and the life which he gives therewith to an earth 
in the change of the winds and the clouds through, through which they trail their servants between the sky and the earth, indeed are signs for a people that are wise. 2164. And also in Surat al Rahman, he created man, mankind, teaching man speech. The sun and moon follow their course, and the grass and trees prostrate. And he has raised the heaven and set up the balance, declaring that you should not contravene with regard to the balance and observe the measure and justice and do not skimp in the balance. And the earth, he placed it for all creatures. In it are fruits and date palms with sheaves and grain with husk and fragrant herbs. So which of the favors of your Lord will you deny? How can we deny this manifestation of his beauty and his power and his grace and all the things that are unfolding both within us and around us how many signs are being revealed to us both inwardly and outwardly and still the creator questions us saying can you not see perhaps our difficulty in beholding these signs comes from the fact that our consciousness is preoccupied to some extent or other with other kinds of information that it seems is assaulting us and demanding our attention. So much of what we see and hear in the world seems to cover up that perception of natural splendor which inspires love, joy, trust and peace. What we hear and see on the monitor of this world's news does appear to be a deep obscuration and distraction from the purity of our true existence and divine purpose that can inspire in us fear and uncertainty rather than peace and clarity. And so it is in our modality of perception, consciousness and belief that we have freedom to choose what we want to focus on and what we want to believe in. Should we believe in what the sharp-tongued gurus of atheism preach while denying the signs of God that are powerfully shining upon and within us? Should we believe and base our life goals and priorities upon what the television, the media is telling us or seek deeper travel deeper within ourselves and all that is manifesting around us for another frame of reference and experience. And then how do we shift our frame of reference from the messages that the media is providing to the revelation of eternal power and grace? Let us consider what the words of revelation in this ayah are telling us and where they are leading us. The use of the word niche directs us to the place where we turn in prayer. The prayer niche. It is in the prayer niche, in that place where we worship, surrender, turn to Allah in submission and praise, that we can experience the mystery described in this ayah within our hearts and souls, inshallah. Let us remember what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about what happened to Maryam radiallahu anha as she sat in the prayer niche focused only upon the contemplation of her Lord. Whenever Zechariah alayhi salam came to bring her food, he found a feast laid out before her, the provision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything that she needed was provided by Allah as she turned her attention to Him alone. This is also a parable and message for us about trust in God 
and the importance of deep focus in prayer, the blessed moments of our life in which, which are purely dedicated to God, our beloved Lord, the imperishable reality existing forever in the midst of the perishable world. In the beautiful ayah about his light, Allah then tells us that he guides to his light whom he wills. What a wonder. It's a sign of great hope for us, inshallah, that we have been led even to hear, to read, and recite these words with love for the one of infinite grace who is sending his light to us and love and for the one he sent as light and mercy for the world. It is the intention of making this short video to share this bounteous invitation from our Lord Most Merciful to seekers of knowledge and light. May we truly and ever more deeply by his grace receive this gift and manifest it in our lives, light upon light. And may our lives become vessels through which His light manifests. The mystery and the experience of His light is awakened through love and through His Rahma. And He speaks to us of the universal meaning of His Rahma, mercy and grace, when he says to his holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa ma arsalnaka illa rahmatan lil alamin and we sent thee not but as mercy for all the worlds wouldn't it not be wonderful if the beings in all the worlds could receive this mercy and grace could understand what god is sending us and receive and give it with a very open heart and mind.